This video is going to be about my new robot vacuum, but it's not really about the robot vacuum. Confused? It'll make sense by the end. Occasionally, I get requests from companies to do reviews about their products. Most of the time, I say no thanks. But when someone recently offered me a robot vacuum cleaner, I remembered something my old grandpappy used to say. He told me, if anyone ever offers you a robot vacuum cleaner, you say yes. Grandpappy was a wise man. It turns out, this is a pretty nice little vacuum. It's the ProScenic 811. It does pretty much everything you'd expect from a robot vacuum cleaner in 2018. With the app, you can schedule when you want it to start. You can specify a couple different cleaning modes and you can even control it manually, kind of like an RC car. That's fun. It cleans pretty well if you can get it to stay in the place that you want it to clean. I just can't make sense of the logic that it uses to decide where to clean. It seems like it goes over the same area over and over, but ignores other areas that are close by. But honestly, that's no different than any other robot vacuum cleaner, as far as I know. The zigzag cleaning mode seems to make the most sense, so that's the one I've been using most. My favorite part is that it can return to the charging station on its own. Depending on how far it's wandered from the charging station, it sometimes takes a little while for it to get back to its home. It's kind of weird how much fun it is to just watch it work. It's mesmerizing. Overall, it's a nice little vacuum. Thanks, ProScenic. Now I can't just do a video about a product without somehow making it relevant to home automation enthusiasts like us. I asked the manufacturer if we could get access to the app in some way that would allow us to control the robot through Home Assistant. They said no. If you want to see how a real hacker gets a robot vacuum cleaner to communicate with Home Assistant, check out Rob's video on the hookup. I could have done it his way if I had the time, but I don't. So I thought of another workaround instead. And this little trick lets me talk about one of my favorite things to do with Home Assistant, text to speech. Like a lot of new smart devices, the ProScenic vacuum works with Alexa. To connect it, you just install the ProScenic Alexa skill on the Alexa app or the website. Once you do that, you'll have these voice commands available through Alexa to control your robot. Great. So if I say those commands out loud to Alexa, she'll communicate with the robot and he'll do his job. But what about when I'm not home? Yep, you guessed it. I'm gonna tell Google Home to tell Alexa to tell the robot vacuum to start cleaning. You probably saw that coming. In Home Assistant, you can send a text-to-speech message to your media players. I only have two devices that accept the text-to-speech commands. That's my Chromecast Audio and my Google Home Mini. I think it works with Sonos speakers too, and maybe some others, but I don't have any of those to test with. Sadly, as of right now, you can't send text-to-speech messages to Alexa. But maybe someday, if we're good, and brush our teeth and do our chores, that magical day will come Text-to-speech is pretty fun. I use it just to send messages to the kids and Mrs. Z's when I'm not at home. Home Assistant auto-discovers these Google devices and gives you this little box where you can type your messages. So if I want to announce something to the family, I just type the message here, and that's pretty fun. But to make text-to-speech really useful, we need to include it in some automations. For example, I have one automation that tells me if my car's not plugged in at 10 p.m. I needed something that would get my attention more than a text message, which if I'm in bed already, I would ignore, like I'm ever in bed at 10 o'clock. It's ridiculous. Here's what this automation looks like. The trigger is 10 p.m. So every night at 10 p.m. this automation will run. I set two conditions here. So both of them have to be true for the automation to continue on to the action. The first condition is that I'm home. Because if I'm not home, it means I'm probably still at work. And if I'm at work, my car's at work, and of course it's not plugged in, and I don't need the Google Home to announce that to the family. They already know. And the second condition is a binary sensor on my car charger that tells me if the car is plugged in or not. I have a juice box charger, and it gives some really fun information that you can include in Home Assistant. Maybe I'll talk more about that some other day. So if it's 10 o'clock, and I'm home, and the car's not plugged in, then that will trigger the action. For text-to-speech, the service is TTS Google Say. 
For the data, you put the entity ID of your media player. In this case, I'm using my Chromecast audio. So it announces it over the speakers in the ceiling in the house. And the message says, it's 10 o'clock, dad's car's not plugged in. Somebody better do something about it. As another example, you could set an announcement if somebody leaves a door open too long. For the trigger, I'm using the state of the binary sensor that's connected to the door between our kitchen and the back patio. If the state of that binary sensor goes from off to on, meaning the door went from closed to open, and it stayed open for at least five minutes, that triggers the action, which calls the TTS Google Say service and tells our Chromecast audio to say, hey, could somebody please shut the back door? I'm actually surprised I don't hear that one more often. And I've got one more example. In this case, I want motion in the garage after dark to announce to the robbers that we've got surveillance cameras. So the trigger is just motion in the garage. These are the conditions that you use if you want to do something after sunset but before sunrise. That could be useful to you in other automations. Actually, now that I think about it, that'll probably trigger more often than I want. Because anytime I'm in the garage after dark, that's going to go off. Okay, that one's going to need some work, but there's probably still some useful parts in there that you could use for your own stuff, right? Now for text to speech to work, you need an entry in your configuration.yaml file. If you're using the example configuration.yaml file, the text to speech component is probably already in there, but if it isn't, it should look like this. It seems the default is Google Say. If you want Google to use a different language besides English, you put a line like this here, and these are your options. There are other text-to-speech engines besides Google. Here's a list. Most of them are not free. Microsoft does have one, and theirs has a lot of different parameters you can change, like volume and pitch and a bunch of other stuff. So if you feel like getting really crazy with your voice announcements, maybe try the Microsoft one. Well, now it's time for the grand finale of automations. So when you tell Google Home to tell Alexa to tell your robot vacuum to start cleaning, it sounds like this. Computer, tell CleanBot to start cleaning. CleanBot starting. <laughs> I hope there are at least a few of you out there that think that that's as funny as I do. Because that's funny. Well, that's it. It's a pretty cool little robot vacuum cleaner and a very creative way to get it working with Home Assistant. As always, thanks for watching. Until next time, adios. find out what I'm doing next, if you like what I'm doing and you want to help me out, if you need more help than I can provide, and if you just want to go to one place for all this stuff,